Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll explain you a stable multivibrator using operational amplifier in great details. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first I'll explain you basics of a stable multivibrator. After that, I'll explain you circuit diagram of symmetric a stable multivibrator. With this circuit, first I'll derive output equation. And based on output equation, I'll explain you working and waveforms of symmetric A-stable multivibrator. At last, I'll explain you asymmetrical A-stable multivibrator along with its working and waveforms. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of A-stable multivibrator. First of all, one should understand what is A-stable multivibrator. See, A-stable multivibrator means both states are not stable. There are two states, plus V voltage and minus V voltage. So both states are not stable. What it means? Both states are there in quasi-stable state. So quasi-stable state changes automatically. So here V plus and V minus both states changes automatically. Like output is V plus that will changes to V minus automatically and V minus changes to V plus automatically. That's why you can say a stable multivibrator is having both states. Those are not stable means those are quasi stable state. So here as both states are quasi stable state, a stable multivibrator that we use it as a square wave generator. Let us understand all the basics. See a stable multivibrator has no stable state. Both states are quasi stable state. Stable state doesn't change. To change the stable state, we need external trigger and quasi-stable state changes based on circuit automatically. So a stable multivibrator that one can use as a square wave generator. Let me explain you how. You see here we have a stable multivibrator and here output is having two states plus V voltage and minus V voltage. Now you see here we don't give any external trigger plus V voltage to minus V voltage this state change that happens automatically and minus V voltage to plus V voltage that change in state happens automatically. That's why output is square wave generator over here. Now I'm going to explain you circuit diagram of symmetric a stable multivibrator. So first of all, you need to understand what is the meaning of symmetric a stable multivibrator means it will be square wave generator. But what is the meaning of symmetric? Symmetric means here T on and T off time period will be equal. Let me explain you how. You see, here we have plus V voltage. So that is T on time period. And here we have minus V voltage. So that is T off time period. For symmetric A-stable multivibrator, T on and T off this time period is equal. So here with symmetric A-stable multivibrator, T on and T off time period is equal and based on this you can say duty cycle is half or you can say 50 percentage. Let me explain you what is duty cycle. See duty cycle that is T on divided by T on plus T off. If T on and T off is equal then duty cycle will be 1 divided by 2 means you can say 0.5 in terms of percentage, it will be 50 percentage. Now to understand working, first of all, you need to understand what is output over here. See here, this operational amplifier that is used in differential configuration. Differential configuration means here input to this op-amp that is given to both input terminals. Here we have positive terminal, here we have negative terminal. So here input is happening at both terminals. That's why this is differential configuration. So first of all, you should know what is the output of differential configuration. See, if I say op-amp is having differential gain AD, then V out over here, that is this differential gain AD into differential input voltage. So here differential input voltage is V1 minus V2. At positive terminal, input is V1. At negative terminal, input is V2. That's why differential input is V1 minus V2 into differential gain AD. 
remember one thing this differential gain ad that is very high that's why here at output we will be having only two possibilities output can be plus v voltage or it can be minus v voltage that is biasing voltage applied to this operational amplifier right now first of all let us try to understand what is this v1 voltage see v1 voltage that is happening as per this positive feedback so v1 voltage that is appearing somewhere over here right and at this terminal we have v out voltage so based on based on potential divider rule this v1 is happening you see how v1 that is you see it is v out into this resistance that is r1 divided by addition of these two resistance that is r1 plus r2 right and what is v2 this v2 that is voltage across this capacitor so v2 that is vc over here as i have told you this output that can be having two possibilities right either v plus or v minus how it is happening if i say v1 is greater than v2 then difference is positive that positive difference that is amplified by huge gain so output can go up to v plus and if v1 minus v2 that difference is negative the negative voltage is amplified by huge gain so output will be minus v voltage right so to have v out positive there are two combinations if i say v1 is greater than v2 in that case this difference is positive so you will be getting output that is plus v voltage and as if v1 is less than v2 in that case output will be minus v voltage right that is how two possibilities are there now let us try to understand how those possibilities are happening so if i say initially this capacitor is not charged means voltage at this terminal v2 that is zero so at that time output voltage output voltage will be happening as per offset voltage now if i say some offset voltage is there so that offset voltage goes over here in feedback that is resulting into v out is equals to plus v saturated voltage why the reason is v2 is zero and v1 is something so v1 minus v2 that difference gets positive that is amplified by differential gain ad differential gain will be there in terms of 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 6 so you will be getting saturated output that is v plus voltage right so let us try to understand that in waveform so initially initially if i say time period is zero and capacitor is not charged so at that time output will be plus voltage v so that plus v voltage that goes in feedback over here so v1 will be having what value you see i'm writing it by blue color right now i'm saying v1 is see v out into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 that i have told you right v1 is v out into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 but right now over here we have plus v voltage right during this time interval so v1 will be v into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 right so here what will happen at v2 so v2 is capacitor voltage so here you see this plus v voltage that is happening at output now that will be charging this capacitor that will be charging this capacitor so here you see capacitor is getting charged capacitor is getting charged and this charging that is happening as per rfc time constant and as soon as this v2 voltage that is exceeding v1 what will happen i have told you see if v2 that is exceeding v1 then output will be having transition to minus v voltage so you see here now output that is having transition to minus v voltage now what will happen as if minus v voltage is appearing over here so as if minus v voltage happens over here as if minus v voltage happens over here then now v1 will be changing to you see now v out is minus v so v1 will become minus v into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 so now see this v out now that is minus v so now minus v voltage that is 
that will be charging this capacitor but capacitor is having plus v1 voltage so to charge capacitor in negative voltage it will be taking time so now capacitor is getting charged in this way you see and as soon as this capacitor voltage which is v2 if it is going below minus v1 then again this condition is getting satisfied which is v1 is greater than v2 right so here you see we are having minus v voltage at output side and capacitor is going towards minus v1 voltage right that is this and if v2 goes below this again polarity of output that will changes to plus v voltage right so again this is how things are getting repeated you can observe by red color i am showing capacitor is going towards minus v and by blue color i am showing capacitor voltage that is going towards plus v voltage right so that is how capacitor capacitor voltage polarity that is changing and based on that output is generating square wave like this here here time constant for t on and time constant for t off both are having same time constant as per rfc time constant and as both are having same time constant here duty cycle duty cycle that is 50 percentage right now i'm going to explain you asymmetrical astable multi vibrator so in which duty cycle is not 50 percentage right so here we will be having duty cycle that is not 50 percentage what it means t on is not equals to t off so here also same equations are applicable here also same equations of v out that is ad into v1 minus v2 where v1 is this v2 is vc and if v1 is greater than v2 v out will be v plus v1 is less than v2 v out will be v minus all equations are same only difference is there in terms of how capacitor is getting charged so now i'll explain you what will happen as if output voltage is plus v voltage so as if output voltage is plus v voltage here we will be having plus v voltage and at that time this v1 at that time this v1 will be how much that will be v into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 so you see here we have plus v voltage so plus v voltage that will be making this d1 diode in forward bias so as d1 diode is there in forward bias here current will flow from rf1 and it will be charging this capacitor c so here this capacitor voltage now that will be going to increase towards plus v voltage so you see here i am showing you capacitor voltage that is increasing towards plus v voltage over here right and here what is the time constant here we have time constant as per rf1 into c now as soon as v2 that is exceeding v1 what will happen i have told you if v2 exceeds v1 if v2 exceeds v1 v out will become minus v voltage right so as you observe here v2 voltage that is exceeding v1 now v out that will become minus v voltage as if v out becomes minus v voltage what is my v1 now now v1 will become minus v into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 right now you see here minus v voltage is appearing so minus v voltage that will make this diode d2 in forward bias as this diode d2 is there in forward bias now minus v voltage that will be charging capacitor by negative polarity right so you see here from v1 to minus v1 towards capacitor is getting charged right so here what is the time constant time constant that is based on this rf and c right so rf2 into c that is the time constant and this is what the process which is getting repeated again and again from minus v1 to plus v1 we will be having v1 greater than v2 so plus v voltage and from from 
v1 to minus v1 will be having minus v voltage and that is what keeps on repeating that is generating square wave over here but if you observe this square wave if you observe this square wave then in this square wave see this t on and t off time constants are different and as both time constants are different duty cycle that is not 50 percentage it is other than 50 percentage right here i have shown rfc that time constant that is lower compared to rf2c right that's why t off is greater than t on over here so that is how one can have asymmetrical asymmetrical multi vibrator i hope you have understood all those things still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video